They call him T-City, short for Triangle City, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega is a great fighter, a guy that has all the ability inside the octagon. He started as a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, but you have seen the evolution of Brian Ortega as his career has continued to go on, has continued to proceed. Brian Ortega is getting better and better and better. He has now found himself staring across the octagon of some of the best fighters the division has ever seen, and he will continue to do that as long as he keeps developing the skills that are necessary. And sometimes it's hard to become a champion without having tasted defeat. A lot of people believe the Max Holloway fight for Ortega will be something he can build upon moving forward. His footwork, his movement is next level. It is not something we have seen before. I would have expected to see this man in Beijing, Athens, somewhere trying to represent the country. But instead, he does his work inside the UFC's octagon, and he is special, and he is so fun for him. Any praise from a two-time United States Olympian, Daniel Cormier. First order of business, though, tonight, winning this mixed martial arts contest. is the venue in which every UFC athlete hopes to one day compete. And we are now ready to go from Madison Square Garden here in New York City. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. And now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC lightweight division. It's who's he first? Fighting out of the blue corner. Brian T. City Ortega! And now it's who's his opponent? Fighting out of the red corner. The Korean Super Bowl. Referee Herb Great Dean fight. will handle the action Ready. in the octagon. Good. All right, here we go. Early portions of this round with Brian T. City Ortega. And it would seem to me, Daniel, path of least resistance, take this fight to the ground and find a choke. But if you talk to Brian Ortega, not unlike a lot of our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts, this man has fallen in love with his hands. He wants to strike tonight. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. And now Leather B. to his feet. Choi's head kick is blocked. No damage there. Ortega's in there, fighting calm, staying collected in the face of a very tough fight right now. Oh, nice combination of kicks there. Oh, punches in bunches as he lands another combination there. Really doing a nice job stringing the shots. Together. He's doing a great job of stringing the shots together and also just mixing up the target and the attacks. Great job finding different places for his strikes to land. Takedown defense holds up. Oh, how did he eat that up? All right, well, he's had his striking on point tonight, and as evidence, some swelling now on his opponent. Yeah, light swelling right now. But if he doesn't address it immediately, it'll turn to something much worse. Oh, massive kick. Everything behind it. 
Looking to land the right hand, he misses. Well, block that punch. Inside kick. Well, MMA is a constant exercise in risk mitigation, right? But it would seem to me that if he really goes for it offensively, he can handle it. Seconds to go. Slip and counter by will take it. Five minutes in the books. Well, DC, this is what the fans paid to come and see. Multiple knockdowns on one side in that round, and it's amazing to think that as we sit here, this fight's not over yet. It's not over yet. There's no three knockdown rule like in boxing. Right. So as long as the guy gets up, right. the guy can continue to fight. It is a it is a phenomenal fight. We knew it when the matchmakers told them that they were putting them together. Great fight, and it's truly delivered. Ready to fight. Ready. Play. All right, round two. Ortega gets hit by that leg kick. Ooh, the head kick lands. Looking to establish the jab here. Nicely done by Ortega. Oh, is he opened up now? Nasty cut on the bridge of the nose. Elbow lands for him. He passes the half. Oh, the ground and pound is there. Right inside his opponent's guard here, DC. You don't want to play around here too long. No, you got to either have two hands in or two hands out. Our guys start to attack triangle. Beautiful fight instinct there as he reverses position, and now he's got the dominant position. He did a fantastic job recognizing, man. I have got to get on the offense from bottom to top to dominant position. What a great job. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Now inside the close guard. And he's going to try to find ways to pass and move to a submission. Darce, yep, he's trying to hit a Darce here. Oh my goodness, that dark choke is very tight. Look at that, he's in trouble, it's over, it's over. Oh, he got out. He cleared his leg, got back to his back, and created some space between him and his opponent to stay out of that dark choke. Good work from the top here by Ortega. And there it is, another strike gets through on the ground. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Oh, that Darce choke is tight. Okay, he's got it. That's it. Wow, he gets out and now reverses position. Beautiful submission defense by this guy. He was constantly under attack. Grappler's delight tonight. Well, not exactly what we thought we would see out of this jiu-jitsu fighter. He's had a lot of success on the feet, and I think this is why sometimes the film can lie if you lean too heavily in there. Absolutely. I mean, you think you're coming in here to fight a grappler, and this guy looks like a boxer tonight. His hands have looked crispy. His kicks, everything that he is doing has worked, and I think this is partly due to the fact that you think he's trying to take you down, when in reality, this guy can fight everywhere. Oh, wow. 
right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. Leaving his jaw wide open for him to stay on the outside, pumping with the jaw. All right, 60 seconds between rounds. That gives us a chance to look at some of the replays from that previous round, including some of the damage sustained on his nose. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice shot that landed that opened up that cut on the nose. Granted, any cut is bad, but this one is in a spot where it shouldn't affect him too much. What we have to watch, though, John, is if the nose is right, broken. Right, right. Then it's right. hard for him to breathe. Yeah, get the blood in that nasal cavity. Potentially trickles down the throat a little bit. I mean, fighting just sounds like a really fun <laughs> career. Well, let's get to the next round. Well, he continues to offer up the kick here, but just misses with that one. All right, seems as though his sole focus is attacking that cut, and man, it's getting... Oh! Oh, my God! Trying to finish this fight! That'll do it! Do Paul Choi! Oh, 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 my goodness. So what a moment in this man's career. A huge finish in front of a capacity crowd. After party's gonna be on fire. How about it? I mean, I'm just sitting here stunned because to watch a young athlete have a performance like this was really amazing. The finishing instincts, his ability to close the show, it was next level. It was amazing, John. The official decision is in. Here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is called a stop to this contest at 48 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by TKO, the Korean Superboy, Du Ho Choi. So the Korean Superboy, Du Ho Choi, with another highlight for the reel tonight. That reel's getting pretty crowded. Crazy to think this guy is just getting started, maybe a few years removed from his fighting prime.